out again, recording in the wild. It is windy today, so I have no idea whether the sound will work out right or not. Well, here we go. Part of my story that plays a big part in who I am right now, don't often share too much detail about it. Um, I tell people that I worked 15 years in retail, and that doesn't really do it justice. The reason I'm going to delve into that a little bit is you know, people ask me, Paul, you're the king of automation. Like everything you do, you found a way to systemize it, process it, speed it up, use tech to improve on the process that you've got. You've got AI running. And amongst all of that, you never really lose sight of what's really important. You're still there in the middle of it all being the human. Like, how do you begin to get on that journey? And you know what? I've only been in B2B world for five years. It's not like I've spent my whole life in B2B. Jeez, it's windy. But see, I spent 15 years in retail and that, that shaped me. That really did shape me. So German discount retail, right? I'd go through an entire day. I'd take 15, 20,000 pounds tokens in one day and I'd have three, four, maybe five staff, including myself all day from starting work at five or six in the morning through till shut at the store, usually half eight. And then, and then later years, it became sort of 10, 11 o'clock. You couldn't really do a whole day without killing yourself. And you learned the hard way how to make things efficient. Cause if you didn't make things efficient, um, your career died on the spot. There's no two ways about it. You've got to be super efficient. You know, you've got all of your trading law all of your ticketing, all of your ordering, your stock to put out, your customers to serve, your bakery to run, safe to manage, tills to sort, staff concerns, HR issues, rotors, audits, area manager coming in, customer complaints, customer praise, weekly memos, strategy, planning, cash audits, all those sorts of things. And by the end of 15 years, I could pretty much do most of that with my eyes shut. Part of it's about being a good leader, which don't really apply to what I'm doing now because I'm a pretty much a one man band other than the associates who really do come into their own, but I wouldn't really say that I'm their leader, right? I'll give them a project, set them free, give them the expectations and they, and they're talented enough to be able to take that dip on their own. Yeah. I spent 15 years of desperately trying to find that work-life balance. I was the guy that would, and if you're watching this, you know me from little, hello, good to see you. But I was the guy that would do whole days work in 10, 11 hours whilst other managers were there till they'd work 15 or 16 hours. That's not for me. Yeah. When, when, when the time's needed, when the time's right, then you've got to put those hours in. Yeah, fine. I once did a 42 hour shift, like it or lump it. That's what I did. Stupid. You live and you learn. And for 10 years of that, I'd double up on a weekend and I'd finish I'd start work at five in the morning. I'd finish at three in the afternoon. I'd get home. It's before family. Like it was just me and my, my fiance as she was then. We're now married. And I'd get home. I'd have some tea, get a shower. Sometimes I'd even grab 30 minutes, nap on the bed. And then back out. And then I'd start 5 p.m. shift with the police. Volunteer police officer. Everybody thinks you're a plastic bobby. I think you might be a PCSO who... Don't really have any real powers. There's nothing against PCS or a fantastic um, team of people, but it's not the same as being a volunteer police officer. As a volunteer police officer, I was trained to do everything pretty much that a regular Bobby was trained to do. The only thing I got away with was generally not doing as much of the paperwork because I wasn't qualified enough or I just didn't have the experience to finish the paperwork. I was one of the few that tried, tried to do that, tried to get it done. Um, and I enjoyed it. I didn't want to be the person who kind of handed off to somebody else and let them deal with all of my shit. I wanted to be the person that, that they could come to and go, right, I want to take this off Paul because I know he'll have done a good job with it. And I'd be there at well, three, four, five o'clock in the morning sometimes. And then it's the weekend and I'd want to be up. I'd want to be not wasting my day in bed. I'd want to be up nine, 10 o'clock in the morning, going out and doing something with my fiance or with my family or my friend. So you learn, you learn to be efficient. You learn to be efficient in everything. And I think that's the key of 
where I'm at with things. And you, if you want to take some inspiration from that, it's got to be, you've got to be like letting that mentality seep into every part of your person. If you want to be really efficient at things. And that's hard. I always talk about retail as being my crucible. It's what formed who I am. I'd never take it away. I'd always do it again. And I'd encourage any young people out there who's wondering what to do with their lives, what to do with their career, go and try retail because it molds you into a person. Do you either sink or swim? And you sink or swim very quickly. So yeah, automation, efficiency, it's kind of baked into my DNA now. If I think about just something simple like getting breakfast ready on the morning for me and my son and my wife, and I'm not the person who goes to the cupboard, gets one ball out, puts it down on the counter, goes and gets a spoon out, puts it on the counter, goes and gets my cereal out, nor I'm the person that stood there, I go, the, I go to the cupboard and I get three balls out and I put them on the table ready because I know other people are going to need those. I get three spoons out. I get everybody's cereal out at the same time. I get everybody's milk out the fridge at the same time because I'm just saving time, right? Why open and shut the fridge three times? Why open and shut the cupboard three times when I could just do it now, do it once? And that's the principle I apply to business. You'll see from the... The newsletter, I mean, it'll probably be released by the time this content hits the screen. Um, I'm going to do a, I'm starting a series on podcasts about how I'm setting up a new podcast alongside everything else I'm doing. I wouldn't do that if I wasn't comfortable that I could minimize the amount of workload that that creates for me. Has to be minimum workload, otherwise I'm not going to get it done. And it goes by the wayside like everybody else's podcasts do. Mine doesn't, mine won't, and I know it won't. Stage one was about how, how to choose to set it up efficiently with ChatGPT, right? Get description written, ideate on it, figure out what I want to do, what's going to be my gimmick, what am I going to, what's going to set me apart from all the other podcasts out there. Market Pulse Pros and Pioneers, by the way, if you want to give it a, a listen, Spotify link will be down in the comments. Also available in all major podcast directories. Newsletter two is going to be much more about how I streamline the process of getting guests on that show. Right, first up, create a calendar link, right? That just automates getting them in my calendar. And you can set custom workflows up for how to contact them before and afterwards. So before the show goes live, make sure you're getting a biography out of them. Get them to write the biography for you, rather than you having to research them and do it yourself and probably do a bad job of it. Get them to send you the headshot so you can get the graphics prepared. Make sure that the instructions are there to tell them how to share the podcast, how they can maximize the impact on their own profiles and social media. All the little things that you'd forget to do or you just wouldn't be bothered to do if you wrote that email every time. But getting that into an automated flow then. So not just having it as a template where I can send it to people, but still has to be a conscious effort to send it to them. But actually, I just send them a link. And then the link sends them to Calendly. They book, a, they book the meeting. I know what that's for. On my side, all I've got to do is swap the Calendly link for a recording studio link in my diary. And from their side, they get a nice little email saying, thank you for signing up. Uh, please send me this information. And then afterwards, again, like, thank you for being a guest on the show. Here's your, here's your promotional materials. Here's the date that it's going to be done by. Um, here's when you're going to go live. All those sorts of things. Just making sure you make everybody's life um, as easy as possible. You've got to be making everything easy for other people as well as yourself. It's not just about efficiency for you. It's efficiency for other people, your customers, your partners, the people that enable what you do. I don't just ask people to be a referrer for me as a business. I ask people to be a referrer and then tell them what my clients, ideal clients are seeing before they meet me. What are the sort of things that they're doing? What are the sort of things they're seeing? Who are they? And I educate my partners on who I'm looking for. It's easy. I don't just expect them to know who my ideal client's going to be. And I make sure they've got a record of that so they can refer back to it. And then I tell them what they can say to refer me in to people they know. Here's what you send in an email, roughly, tailor it. Here's what you send in a WhatsApp. Here's what you'd send in a, an email. Here's how you'd approach it in person, or I'd approach it in person. Tailor it to what you think. And hands on heart, a lot of that has come by Dave Plunkett. So big shout out, Dave. Your partnerships course, Kick-Ass Collaboration Program is fantastic. It is the bee's knees. I thought I knew a lot of this stuff already. And it turns out I was fucking wrong. So Dave's telling me all the, all the different materials that I need to create. And my mind's thinking, like, how do I automate getting these out to my partners so that I don't have to sit and do this because I will forget or I'll not do it. How do I make things easy for people, not just myself? So I think that is 
really powerful and it's something everybody should be considering this day and age. We talk about chat GPT and AI, right? That's only part of it, only a small part of it. If you, you write, so if you write the same text over and over again, why are you writing that text over and over again? Use a tool like Briskine or TextBlaze or something similar to, you know, you write a short code and tab and it, and it outputs all that paragraph for you because you use it all the time. Or if you've got a link that you use all the time, here's my diary. Don't have that link stored somewhere. You've got to go find it, copy it and paste it into the document. Just have it as a short code in your text document, in your text platform. So I might type um, Cal, C-A-L, and, it, and it'll input into LinkedIn or into email or wherever I'm writing. It'll input my calendar link. And I might have different calendar links for different meeting types. And on my desk, all I might have is the short codes for them. Just till I get used to doing them. I've used them for that long now. I know what they all are. Beautiful. Saves me a ton of time. My goal. All right. So I only work four days a week. Four days. And I don't mean morning till night. All right. That's, that doesn't work for me. I've got a six-year-old at home and I've got a six-month-old. That doesn't work for me. My family wouldn't survive that. And what's the point in me having revenue if I'm not able to spend it with my family because they've buggered off because I work all hours. Joy you know is challenge the beliefs that you have because people believe that they need to work 50 and 60 hours a week to be successful in business at one job. Guarantee you don't stick a bomb up your ass. If you give yourself 50 hours a week to do your job, you'll make it stretch to 50 hours a week. If you only give yourself 30, you'll make good progress in that 30. There might be weeks where you need to do 50. I'm not saying don't do the 50 when you need to. But test yourself, challenge yourself as to whether that's essential on a weekly basis or not. I run two and a half businesses and I network and I come up with new stuff in four days a week. And I have a young family at home, so I don't always get a full night's sleep either. Now and again, I will come away from the desk, have my family time, go for a walk. And then I'll hit the desk again and I'll time block it, right? Like I'll need this to be done by one in the morning because I can't be back at the desk again tomorrow. It has to get done tonight. Urgency. That's the other thing I learned from retail. Urgency. Prioritization and urgency. You've got to know what's important to get done. You've got to be able to force yourself past that procrastination. If there's a frog there to be eaten, eat it. Eat it in one mouthful. Get it done. You don't have to worry about it anymore. You'll feel better on the other side. The weight off your shoulders. I feel like I've been quite cathartic. This I've enjoyed it. But this, like, these are all the things that I see other people struggling with. And for me, that's baffling that people struggle with these things because my head can't get around it. I can't think any other way. You can train yourself to think the way I think. Yes, I'm ADHD. Yes, I multitask. Uh, yes, I'm a doer. But I'd argue that being a doer, it's not something that you're born as. It's something you turn yourself into because you get rid of all the bullshit excuses that everybody else uses and you just get on with it. As Arnold Schwarzenegger says, how much time in each day do you spend thinking about how to get started instead of just getting, getting started? Stop coming up with excuses for yourself. Time, not having time, is an illusion. And if you are up against it, and if you are looking for ways to be more efficient, if you're looking for ways to optimize what you're doing around social media, around content, around creation of blogs and newsletters and articles and graphics and things might be worth having a chat. I'd love to help people out. I like helping people. I can't say I can do it for free. I have paid consultation time that I tend to send people to. Guaranteed, your money will be time well spent. I 100% deliver more value than I, than I get out of it myself, but I get a kick because I get to see people go and put things into practice and that's amazing. It's a buzz. I love it. Love seeing people become more efficient as a result of speaking with me. People are in the two by two club. You're not just willing to ask for advice, you're willing to act on that advice. And that is me, Randall Over. I'll be clicking this up into several pieces of content and I'll be using it all week. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, give me a subscribe, come back to my account. I will be pushing some more rants and raves and advice and tricks over the coming weeks. Have a good week.